Hello and welcome to my channel. Around one year ago I made a video about very interesting Wasi Direct Drive actuator. This one. This is an actuator from the James company and the name of this actuator is RMDX8. I really like this actuator, I use it a lot in many of my projects and even I built a complete robot arm out of these actuators. This one. And I really like this robot arm, the only problem is that the motor in the shoulder are not very powerful and the motors in the elbow are a little bit heavier. But recently James company approached me again and they told me that they developed new actuators. RMD X10, the bigger brother of the RMD X8. And so this is a potential candidate for the shoulder of my robot arm. Another actuator which they developed is RMD X6. And this actuator will be perfect for the elbow of my robot arm. Today I'm not going to look at the smaller brother. Today I'm going to look at the bigger brother. So we're going to look at the parameters of this actuator and we're going to check how it works. And this is a close view on the actuator. So this is the output shaft. As you can see, the output shaft has a lot of screw holes to fix your load. There is 9M5 holes. And over here there is a screw holes to mount the actuator. Also you can mount this actuator from the back. There is a screw holes over here. Exactly as RMD X8. And in addition to this, there is this 6M5 screw holes. And using them you can fix the actuator just like this. So it's nice to have the additional possibility to fix this actuator. The connector wise it's exactly the same as RMD X8. There is a connector for power, two connectors for the CAN bus and one connector for the serial. There is also one LED over here. As you can see it's bigger than RMD X8. And this one has an outer diameter of 120 millimeters. It's also a little bit thicker and of course it's heavier. And as you can see over here it's written my actuator. I think this is a new branding for these actuators from the James company. Now let's look at the parameters of this beauty. Here I summarized some key features of different actuators. So this is for the X6, X8, X8 Pro. I don't have it because all my X8 Pros I use for different projects. And RMD X10. What is nice is that all of them they use the same voltage, 48 volts. And today we are interested in RMD X10, so let's look only on this one. The nominal current is 8 amps, but with the high load it can go as high as 13 amps. The nominal speed is 150 rpm, the nominal torque is 20 newton meters, and the peak torque it goes up to 50 newton meters. Really nice value, and uh, this value shows us that this actuator should be perfect for my robot arm shoulder. The backlash is the same for all these actuators, is 5 arc minutes and this backlash comes from the gearbox, this is a planetary gearbox and the reduction ratio of this gearbox is 7 to 1. For these two is 6 to 1 and for this one is 8 to 1. The weight is 1.2 kilos and the size 120 millimeters and the width is 47 millimeters. So as you can see now James company has a wide range of geared actuators and uh, this is really nice so like this you can use them in different robots in a weak one in the powerful one or in one robot arm where you need like powerful shoulder less powerful wrist you can use this one in the shoulder this one in the wrist maybe this one in the elbow or some combinations like this. I think it will be really interesting to build robot dogs out of these huge actuators. This actuator comes in this nice solid box and it looks like this, the actuator itself and there is also all necessary cables over here. And now it is time to test this actuator. For this I prepared some 3D printed parts like this one and I'm going to use the simple Arduino with the CAN bus shield. As you can see I already put the wire for the CAN bus and this wire it has two termination resistor, two resistors of 120 ohms. As you can see I have fixed this actuator on this plastic part, like this it can stand. I've also connected the power supply and our Arduino with the CAN bus shield. And this is all what we need in order to run it. 
Over here there is an LED which shows that there is a power in the actuator. Let's try to run it for the first time. I have a small joystick over here on the canvas shield. And with this joystick we can try to put some commands. Great! It works from the first time. This was the noise from the actuator for your reference. And so the program which I used on the Arduino is also very similar to the program which I used for the RMD X8. And in order to understand this program, you need to know the CAN bus protocol for this actuator. And this CAN bus protocol you can find on the website of the GEMS company. Let me show you. If you go to the website of the GEMS company, support download. Over here there is RMD servo motor control protocol for the CAN bus. And over here you have all the available commands explained. Like for example, you can read the PID data, you can write the PID data, you can read the position from the actuator, and you can also run the actuator in the torque closed loop control, in the speed closed loop control, and in the several position closed loop controls. And also these commands, they give you the answer with the current speed, with the current position, and with the current torque. Let me quickly show you the Arduino program which I used. So here we initialize some modules. This is some parameters for the CAN bus shield. This is for the CAN bus. Over here we specify the parameters of this CAN bus. So here I ask motor to give me the current position of the actuator. And here I read this current position of the actuator. Here it's not read initial position. Here I actually write the PID values. This PID values. And here it starts the main loop. And in this main loop, here, if the joystick is pushed up, I add some value to the current position. And if the joystick is pushed down, I reduce the current position. Here, I send this current position to the actuator with the specified velocity. After what, I read the current position, but this is not really necessary. It's uh, just for fun. And this is basically it. And it's uh, quite simple. And as you saw, it works. Over here on the top of the power connector, there is a small serial port. And with this port, you can connect this controller to your computer to set some additional parameters. Let me show you. For this we need USB to serial adapter. And as you can see the serial is connected over here. USB goes to your computer. We also need to connect the power to the actuator. And so from the same website you can also download the motor assistant. And we can try to connect to our actuator with this motor assistant. For this we need to choose the serial. Push connect. And it's connected. And uh, you can see that here you can change some parameters uh, like protect voltage, uh, motor protect temperature, stuff like this. Encoder, I think this one is better not to touch. And over here you can also test your actuator. But you should be careful with these control commands because this motor is very powerful and you should respect the power. That's why we go going to use this multi-loop angle control because here I can limit the speed of the rotation. So let's put the speed of rotation at 60 and angle at 0 and send. Now when we see that it works, let's put the speed of the rotation a little bit higher and let's go to the angle a little bit higher, like 360. Go. And it works. If we go to the minus 360, It also works. You can say that this rotation was not 360 degrees, but I will answer you that 360 degrees is the rotation of the motor, not the rotation of the output shaft. So you need to take into account the reduction ratio. And also over here you can see the temperature of the motor. Next, let's look at the performance, the estimation of the backlash and the torque. For this I'm going to attach long arm to the output shaft. As you can see I have fixed this actuator to this uh, two aluminum beams and these two aluminum beams they are clamped to the table. So this is fixed. Now as you can see I have attached a really long arm. Motor power is on. Arduino power is on. Oh fuck. There is a huge oscillations. And this is a problem with the PID. When I dump this oscillation with my uh, with my hand, it's okay. You see, I need to dump it, and now it stopped. I go back. 
I dump it and it stopped. Yeah, it's kind of too rigid. It's actually scary. <laughs> okay, I will switch it off. Or maybe what I can do now, I can estimate the backlash. So I will look at the play at the end of this arm. It's uh, around 2.5 millimeters at 86 centimeters. And this gives 9.99 arc minute. So we can conclude that the backlash is plus minus 5 arc minute, which is exactly what is stated in the datasheet. These oscillations of the arm appears because the PID values inside the controller of the actuator is not well adjusted for this load. So I took care of this. In my Arduino code I put a part where I change the PID values of the controller and like this it works way better. Let me show you. Power for actuator, power for Arduino. And you see it works way better than before. Cool! It's complicated to test the torque of this actuator using this arm because each time I need to adjust the PID values of this controller. That's why I'm going to test the torque using the special device which I built for this. This is a device which I built to measure the torque, not only for this actuator, but also for the future actuators. The main part of this device is this piece. This is an electromagnetic powder brake. This is electronics for this brake. And over here there is a piece to measure the torque. This brake has shaft in the middle. From this side is this one. And over here we have the piece to measure the torque. This is a piece which you use for the wrench. Not very precisely, but I think it should be enough for us. So I can try to apply some torque over here. And you see it. So the idea is to fix our actuator between this part and this part. Let me show you how the electromagnetic brake works. Now the current is set at zero, so the shaft rotates freely. Let's put some value. Now I need to apply some significant force. And now I can hardly rotate it. And if I will go back to zero, it rotates almost freely again. For this test I'm going to control actuator in torque mode. Power for the actuator, power for Arduino. Uh, 20 newton meters. 21 newton meters. Cool. 20 newton meters. 21. 25. So we made a torque test of this actuator using this wonderful machine. And this test shows that we can go easily to the nominal torque 20 newton meters and it works perfectly fine. When I was trying to go beyond this nominal torque, I was able to go to the 25 newton meters and afterwards the motor stopped. And I thought that maybe there is a problem with the motor. 
but the problem was with my power supply. And the reason for this is that for the nominal operation of this actuator you need 8 amps. And this is exactly the maximum current which my power supply can provide. So that's why I was not able to go farther than the nominal performance. This is something which you should pay attention. For the powerful actuator you need a powerful power supply. And now my overall conclusion about this actuator. First of all, I really like the mechanics. It looks like it's well built and it looks like it's solid actuator. And also it has a low backlash. It has a nice performance. We was able to go easily to the nominal torque, 20 Newton meters. I think it's not very expensive. Of course, it's a little bit more expensive than RMD X8, but this is normal. It's more powerful. The only drawback of this actuator is controller. In my opinion, it's a little bit difficult to work with this controller because it's a little bit difficult to set the proper PID values for your load. In my experience, it's way easier to work with the controllers like MIT Mini Chita controller, where you only need to specify the stiffness and damper. Just to be clear, it works perfectly fine with this controller, it's just a little bit more difficult to set up proper parameters. Overall, I really like this actuator and I'm going to use it in the shoulder of one of my robot arm. For this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, I would appreciate if you put like to this video, one on several comments down below. This is good for the YouTube algorithm. And if you would like to support my channel, you can support me via PayPal, via Patreon or via YouTube channel membership. And by the way, here's the names of the all people who support me on Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Thank you guys and girls, you are the best. Together we are going to bring the robot revolution. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.